So the UK government have introduced a traffic light system for international travel that starts from tomorrow. In this video, I'm gonna break down what this means and what you should look out for and be aware of when you're booking your trip in 2021. And most importantly, I'll let you know the feasibility of actually traveling to these countries that are on the UK's green list right now and what the COVID-19 situation has been like in those countries. Because even though some great countries are on our green list, it doesn't mean that we're on theirs. So before you go and book that three week trip to Australia, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video all the way to the end. So let's explore that. So from tomorrow, the 17th of May, here in the UK, more lockdown restrictions are being lifted. And that includes the return of international travel. The government have confirmed 12 countries and territories have been added to the current green list. And I'm very aware that this video may seem out of date even a few days after publishing. And that may be true in terms of countries moving between green, amber, and red lists. But I'm gonna tell you about the best resources and the best practices for doing your own due diligence before booking a trip. So you can still apply all these processes that we're gonna go through, but the location may differ. I hope that makes sense. Despite the fact that the vaccination process in the UK is well underway, traveling abroad is going to look very different to last year. I've had the experience of flying through different stages of this pandemic over the past year for work. Last summer I was in Sardinia and it was just a case of filling out paperwork and wearing a mask. And then in November I had to travel to mainland Italy and Sweden to shoot a show that I produced for Red Bull. And this was during the UK's second lockdown and we had to have specific work permits to fly along with providing negative COVID tests and quarantine when we got back to the UK. Essentially it is a real hassle and it can still get pretty expensive even if you're visiting a country on the green list. So first of all just bear in mind that it's not going to be like last summer. Travel restrictions in and out of the UK have really tightened up since the start of this year. I've been trying to shoot an episode of Origins in Paris for the past seven months and it has been a logistical nightmare. Just trying to get four people from three countries to one location in France. And as of recording this video, the major destinations for Brits every summer like Spain, Italy and France are not on our green list. I've made a handful of videos on how these countries rely on tourism and if you're interested in that, I will link this one about Italy up here. Okay, so where to start? The most reliable and up-to-date site with correct information is gov.uk. Here you can find the full list of countries on the green, amber, and red lists, as well as detailed information on each destination, their individual coronavirus regulations, entry requirements into the country regarding visas and COVID-19, what documents you now need to provide, if you need to take a test before you fly or on arrival, vaccination certificates, and if you need to quarantine. Gov.uk will also provide links to each country's own government website, so you can check for further details on their end. Essentially, this is just the best place to check. It is my go-to to when I'm trying to figure out what country we have to shoot in and if we're going to be able to feasibly do that. And this is important because even though a country like Australia is on the UK's green list, that doesn't mean that you can just book a trip to Australia and that they're going to let you in. Because Australia's federal government expects that the country's borders will remain largely closed until mid-2022. What? Yeah. I know. And obviously if you're traveling for reasons that aren't a vacation, then obviously your circumstances may differ. I'm assuming that you're watching this video because you just want to get away for a holiday. So what the green list means is when you return to the UK, you have to provide a passenger location form and to show a negative PCR test that you took within two days of flying back to the UK. And most importantly, you won't be required to self-isolate. And then the amber list means you have to do all of the above, but you also have to quarantine at home for 10 days. Or if you're in England, you can pay to take the test to release, which gets you out on day five if you pass a PCR test and then you also have to take another test on day eight. It's kind of confusing, but you can look it up if you're going to do that, which you should bear in mind costs around £150 to £300 to do. And if you're coming back from a country that's on the red list, you have to do the hotel quarantine for 10 days, which you also have to pay for. And this is just for returning to the UK. Yes, they've released the ban on international travel, but when you come back, you have to follow the rules depending on the country that is in that colored list. Hope you're following. So if we're focusing on the green list, we also have to check the entry requirements of each of those countries before we go. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna skip Australia because we've already talked about how their borders are gonna remain largely closed until 2022. But what about New Zealand? New Zealand successfully controlled the spread of coronavirus by shutting its borders early. And was one of the best countries at dealing with the virus, reporting 2,644 cases and 26 deaths. So if you took that 24 hour flight from London to Auckland, would they let you into the country? Nope. Sorry, the New Zealand borders are closed to almost all travelers. They've recently set up a travel corridor with Australia, but that doesn't help anyone in the UK. So you should cross New Zealand off your list for now. The Shire, I'm sure, will still be there when we eventually get back to normal traveling, 
whenever that is. So next up is Singapore. The island state has also been extremely efficient at tackling COVID-19 with a vigorous track and trace system. I made a whole video on this and a handful of other ones that I will also link up here in a playlist. And if we check gov.uk and the Singaporean government website, it currently states, visitors including long-term pass holders from anywhere in the world are not able to enter Singapore without prior permission from the Singaporean government. And even if you are granted permission, you're required to undergo a 21 day quarantine. So that's not really a valid option for a summer holiday in Singapore. And about 1600 miles east of Singapore is the country of Brunei. The nation has been relatively untouched by the pandemic. Can you see the pattern that's starting to emerge here? So entry to Brunei is severely restricted. Anyone looking to enter or exit Brunei must apply for a permit from the prime minister's office. And if you're granted permission, you have to provide negative tests and enter a hotel quarantine. Next up in the North Atlantic is the Faroe Islands. This small archipelago is only accepting UK residents with a special worthy purpose, whatever that means. The feasible options on this list are drastically shrinking, but let's look at Iceland, a country that thrives on tourism. And if you're a subscriber to this channel, you would have seen recently a video I made on how they have been dealing with the pandemic whilst mostly keeping their borders open for tourism. And if you're not subscribed, well, please do that right now if you're finding this video useful. And that video that I talked about is also linked up here, which you can check check out after this one. So Iceland announced on the 18th of March that anyone who is fully vaccinated against COVID-19 would be allowed into the country without being subjected to taking a PCR test before they travel or quarantine. And the Icelandic government have confirmed that the UK's NHS vaccination card will be accepted as proof of vaccination. And upon arrival, visitors will have to take a COVID-19 test in the airport that is free of charge. They will then be allowed to make their way to their accommodation where they have to wait until they get the results back, which could be up to 24 hours, but it's like usually around six. So if you're fully vaccinated, you can check out Iceland. So another country that is on the green list and have vaccinated 55% of the country already is Israel. Israel has said that it will open its borders to all tourists from the 23rd of May. All travelers arriving will be required to present a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours prior to their arrival. And do check the full details, obviously, because there are some limitations and different protocols depending on your vaccination status and other places you may have traveled to in the past 14 days. Israel will seem pretty happy to be opening their borders because they currently have the world's fastest vaccination campaign. However, given the ongoing conflict and given the current situation that's happening right now in Israel and Palestine, that is something that you should really consider before going. The conflict is something that I've gone back and forth on for a long time about making a deeper piece on, but this video is definitely not the place for that. So let's round it off with two final destinations. The first being Portugal. Portugal has said that they will open their borders to UK tourists as soon as they are allowed to travel. On the 5th of May, this is what the tourist minister said to the BBC about the situation. Portuguese government is expecting what other governments are expecting. You need to prove that you have a vaccine or that you have uh, an immunization or that you have a, a negative test. And that's that's pretty much the rules. The rules will be quite simple. And finally, I'm going to package all these together. And that is the British Overseas Territories. Because quite frankly, they're all pretty hard to get to. Despite maybe Gibraltar, which is at the tip of Spain, but it does have the craziest border crossing with Spain. You literally have to walk across a active runway to get into the country. But that's a British overseas territory that you might be able to visit this summer. And then there's also South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands, but they are only accessible by sea. So that's going to be kind of tricky. And then you have a couple of rubber islands that are scattered throughout the Atlantic. So that's the 12 countries and territories on the current green list. But the viable options are somewhat limited. And as I said up the top, it's not going to be that simple this year to travel. You're also going to have to factor in purchasing private PCR tests. You're going to have to take them before you fly out. And when you fly back, they can be like around hundred pounds each. And you should also have a plan for worst case scenarios, because like we saw last year, countries can quickly move from one list to another within a couple of days notice. So you have to be prepared for potentially having to self isolate, changing your flights, extending or shortening trips. And all these costs add up. And unfortunately, that is just the case if we want to travel abroad right now. So countries can still continue to control this virus as much as possible. And finally, when we're discussing each country and their current entry requirements, don't take what I'm saying now as guaranteed facts. Done my research and I've checked on the government websites. Rules are changing all the time. Countries are adjusting their policies. But hopefully if you take these steps, do your own research and calculations, and hopefully you can determine where is a good option for you to travel this year. Or maybe if this has put you off international travel this year, you could just find somewhere in the UK. So thank you for watching and making it all the way to the end. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and leave a comment below where you're thinking about traveling to in the near future. 
And if you're new around here, my name is Andy. I make word explainers on this channel every Sunday, except for I'm not gonna be making one next Sunday. Day that I'm releasing this video, I am currently running my first marathon and then I'm taking the week off. So I'll be back in two weeks with a brand new video. So until then, stay safe and I will catch you guys in the next one.